Hey there, Fellowship family. Welcome to your one-stop shop for all things church life. I'm Mark Francis, once again, your host for today. And we are full in the Christmas season now. And uh, it's exciting to think through well, what what kind of Christmas traditions do we have and what are the things that we do as families and how can we gear up towards um, Christmas Day um, in a worshipful way. Hmm. So w- having said that, I have some really cool people next to me mm-hmm. and they share the same last name. Mm-hmm. At least for now they do. And I'll, I'll well, they <laughs> oh, use, hopefully for, hopefully it's for, hopefully for forever, but I'm, I'm yeah. referencing the past. Oh, so, sure. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry for the slip up there. <laughs> no, that's yeah. all right. So, um, no, but I have, good. you hear them, John Avery mm-hmm. and Alyssa Avery. So John, you've been on these podcasts before, but I'll still yes. le- let you introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm the pastor of family, uh, and family life and biblical soul care. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been doing that for a few years now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Soul care, soul care. Yep. And there is an episode about soul care that yes, we can point is. people to. Yes. So, yes. Um, and Alyssa, you are one of the newer members on staff mm-hmm. here at Fellowship Bible Church. So, give us your title and role here. I am the nursery coordinator. Nursery coordinator. Yes. It sounds like a lot. Is it's that, not bad. It's not bad. It, no, it's been great. Awesome. Yes. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, since February. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So coming up on a year anniversary in a couple months. Yes. Being here on staff. Just crazy. Um, and for those that don't know you, your parents are? Mark and Lisa Carey. Mark and Lisa Carey. Yes. And you are married to? Josh Avery. There you go. Which is my son. Your son. <laughs> yeah. So that's why the... Connecting all the dots right, here. Right, right. Um, and so the funny story, um, the first staff meeting that you attended, mm-hmm. it, it almost was like a family roast where your dad was trying to dig in a little bit to say that you're like the newbie on staff. <laughs> and it was, I, I won't, I can't recall all the things, but I remember you giving it back to him, just dishing him right back to, yeah. to, to Mark. Good, you know, it was he, good to see. He needed that. He needs it. Yeah. Yes, he needed yeah. that in his, in, especially in those staff meetings, mm-hmm. just to right. put him in his place. But yes. thank you for being here, both of you. Um, I'm excited in our conversation today, and really what what started this was, I don't know if you guys remember at church a few weeks ago, we did not have children's ministry for a small portion of the service because we encouraged all families to worship together and to participate. And um, it, we're going to do the same thing for Christmas Eve services. Mm-hmm. So to start us down this dialogue of worshiping as a family together, Alyssa, I'll just turn to you. What are some of your memories that you had as a kid with your parents worshiping together, doing things on a regular basis as a family? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, as a, as a PK, it was really just, that's just what we did. It was a way of life. It was a habit. So, I, you know, I have so many memories of um, church as a kid with my family and back then you just you sat in service with your family every Mm -hmm. um every sunday so it was we just got used to it um yeah we would go to all the functions we'd go to all the the potlucks the winter follies not many of you probably know or remember what that was but so you your family moved here in 1990 yeah right yes and how old were you uh, almost six. Almost six. Yeah. So you, most of your formative memories are here at Fellowship Bible Church. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were the good kid. You, you probably sat in church and and <laughs> and did everything right. And and you know brothers yeah. sisters around you maybe not so much. But sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so so as you grew up here in, at FBC. Um, you were able to view things from a child's perspective and now an adult and mm-hmm. a staff worker working with children. Mm-hmm. So um, what what of, what about that has formed and shaped your current um, role here and even as a mom and as a parent? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I just think I was so blessed to be a PK. Um, and not just, you know, my experience is not um, not just to PKs, but anyone can experience what we did. But um, because 
we went to everything we did everything we sat with our parents in church we we learned you know how to behave in church um we heard from other adults weekly um I just feel like that has shaped my view of church and then how I want my par- my kids to view church. And, um, yeah, I'm just very thankful that we were in, in it for the long haul, mm. I guess. Mm-hmm. And it was just a way of life. It truly was. It wasn't something they dragged us to. I mean, I'm sure at, at some points we were complaining and whatnot. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just – thankful and and now as a parent i'm glad that i have a healthy view of church Mm. um and that we have a healthy church Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. because i know not everybody has has that Mm -hmm. john you moved into winchester around 2000 2001 2001 Mm -hmm. and your kids were how old then uh joshua was 12 hannah was 10 sarah was eight leah was um five and Benjamin was four. Mm. So harkening back to those days, yeah. when you had kids at that age, what were right. some of your <laughs> parenting strategies um, with yeah. kids to engage them mm-hmm. in worship? Yeah. Well, I, I guess what we tried to do was view Sunday morning just as an extension of what we were already doing at home. Because, you know, you're you're at church for an hour or an hour and a half or whatever, depending. Sometimes you're at church for three hours on a Sunday um, for some people that serve and then and then go to church or mm-hmm. whatever, and their kids are going to Sunday school and things like that. But, um, you know, we, we t- Susan and I sought to have formal times of sitting down and family worship times throughout the week, um, and then we tried to have informal times just on the go. Um, in the car or when we're doing something, doing life together, just trying to talk about it mm. so that it was um, not just this every Sunday was a new thing, you know, okay, now we're going to church and that's just so different from mm-hmm. our week, mm. but it's it's something that we wanted to have Jesus, talking about Jesus, being his word throughout the week so that it's just an extension of what you're already doing. Yeah, what you're touching on is just this ongoing dialogue this mm-hmm. not as a parent right um yeah. and we say this now at fbc a lot that we want to partner with parents mm-hmm. in this capacity yeah. of being the primary disciple makers of their children right right yes. and so yeah. making disciples is not just simply you know an hour and a half of, of church on sunday morning right and right. saying okay here's our god time kids yeah. Yeah. so what are some of the things i mean you're saying it would be formal and informal yeah uh, what are some of those examples yeah so formal would be um you know we would uh when our kids were young we had a we had a commentary on the book of genesis uh and that was just one of the things that we did we we would read a passage from genesis and then there was a children's commentary and so uh in that commentary it uh it would kind of help explain the passage you know from a kid's perspective so that they could understand it uh, and then there might be um, a craft. A lot of times we didn't do the craft, but then there might be a game <laughs> that explains the the passage that you can, or you can role play the passage. And you know, so it just had some really good ideas mm-hmm. to keep kids' attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's maybe formal. We did that quite a bit mm-hmm. because the same people that put the Genesis one out, they had one for Exodus and Leviticus. We never made it to Leviticus, but we <laughs> we did do some Gen- Exodus <laughs> stuff. Probably for good reason. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but it was just helpful because there's a lot of the narrative, you know, of um, and and so we just that's kind of one way we did it. And then <clears throat> informal, uh, you know, as I mentioned. It, just wanting to talk to them, they, as children, there's a, just a ton of teachable moments mm. because they sin, and so do their parents, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's just another opportunity to talk about, well, what do we do about this sin? And we point them back to the cross. We point yeah. them back to what Jesus has done for that. And, um, you know, I, I'll tell you this, that, you know, a lot of times when my kids would do something they shouldn't do, um, I found myself getting angry mm. um, and responding in anger. So then, that's not good. Mm. But just as God was teaching me and, and I was being discipled as a young parent too, just to realize that, no, those are actually opportunities to, to, to talk on the go about um, the struggle that they're having within their own hearts of wanting something or getting in an argument with their sibling. Or, or Those are all just opportunities to, to go back and talk about, you know, Jesus died for that mm-hmm. and he loves you and mm-hmm. he doesn't condemn you mm-hmm. for that. And and even though I might be angry, I don't condemn you either. Mm. <laughs> you know? It's, I mean... 
as a parent myself as well, and my kids are now growing up and out of the house, I look back and I've, I'm seeing how I have changed as a mm-hmm. person yeah. by being a parent, mm-hmm. that I never viewed myself as being a teacher. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to be a teacher. That's not kind of my mentality to communicate from that standpoint. But man, that is so vital. Mm-hmm. What you're saying, even like of just using those moments, those teachable moments or those discipling kind of moments with kids, and as a parent to just say something in a way that is like going to be encouraging to them with grace, but mm-hmm. still pointing them to Christ in that mm-hmm. moment, we are teaching, yeah. you know, and, right. and parents, I, I'll admit, I was not always aware of that's my role, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and and I, I look back and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, we we studied through the books of the Bible, you know, I could list off a good 10, 12 of them that I know that we went through reading them just straight verse by verse as a family. Mm -hmm. Um, But you're referencing kind of some tools and some additional devotionals that you Mm -hmm. had. Yeah. But I feel like our church has really grown in this capacity of providing tools and materials. Right. What exists now in the building (laughs) at the home center or as a, as Mm -hmm. a, as a church ministry that we can give parents that just assist people like me that I'm like, I don't view myself as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. What what can I do to help yeah. point the kids towards Christ? Right, right. There, well, in the home center, uh, that's kind of my go-to because yeah. we, we have designed that for resources for families. Uh, there's a devotional down there um, called D6 based on Deuteronomy chapter 6, but it's uh, the idea of the formal and the informal times together. There's a devotional for parents. There's a devotional for, um, and then each age group from high school, middle school, elementary and then, and then preschool. Um, but the nice thing about them is they all have the same theme running throughout them. So if the, what the parents are learning in their devotional, uh, the, the kids are learning as well. And there's ways to help of what to do, how to discuss that with the, with the children. Mm. Um, and there's also a devotional for people with who don't have kids, mm. older, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's one that, you know, that it, it's kind of like uh, all right there that can give you ideas and can help you know what to cover, know what to ask. And, uh, and, and they're really well done. Mm. Um, so that would be one, you know, Mm -hmm. thing. And, um, and there, there's some great books down there, um, that are kind of topical for, for children, children's books, you know, like there's one down there on anxiety that you can read through. Mm. It's about a little bunny rabbit. And then, um, you get to the end of the book and there's a little Bible study that you can have with your child about anxiety at their level, you know, and there's all different kinds of things like (laughs) there's a bunny rabbit in the the book. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good stuff. Cool. Yeah. I don't (laughs) I can't remember the name of the rabbit's name, but it is, yeah. <laughs> Alyssa, how about you? Now that you are a parent, mm-hmm. you know, moving yeah. beyond just that PK kind of role that you're talking yeah. about, what are you and Josh working through right now as parents? Um, I have found there's a lot out there these days. Um, just the Christian world has put out so many resources. It can honestly get overwhelming, um, especially if, you know, it, if you're looking and researching and, and wanting to do everything. And so um, I almost feel like some, uh, you know, those resources are good, but you also just have to constantly just go back to the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Um, even if you're just opening a Psalm a day or whatever, just, just read the Bible. I don't, mm-hmm. That's my number one mm-hmm. uh, thing. But I mean, we've, I am a teacher, so I do love all the resources. Um, so we've, um, we're going through a, a children's Bible. It's an older one. I couldn't even tell you the publishing company or it's just a children's Bible. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a, it's almost a homeschooling curriculum. It's called Rock Solid Kids. Um, Scott McManigle actually, um, he knows the writer of that. Um, and that's put out by Ethnos 360. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really great. It's a chronological study of the Bible, um, and it comes with crafts and, Mm. and all the things. Um, I've done the catechism. I'm all for catechism. Mm. I love it. I think it's just so great to put language to, uh, theology for kids and kids are really great at memorizing. And so if you can ask a question, like what is our only hope in life and death, and they can spit out to you, uh, the answer, just like, you know, and so it just gives them language to our faith. And I really, and there's an app 
for it. Um, the New City Catechism has an app with little songs for each question. So cool. those are yeah. some of the things we've... And you're right. You can't get overwhelmed with resources. Yeah. But just Especially if you're on something. Pinterest. Yeah. I mean, all the moms understand. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so much. Yeah. So let's think about Christmas. Hmm. So now's the Christmas season. Mm-hmm. You know, we can all get wrapped up in presents and decorating and lights and parties that we attend. But as as believers and as disciples of our kids, how can we use this season to point our kids to Christ? What are some things that either you are doing now or have done in the past that we can encourage our congregation to prepare for Christmas? Well, we, um, we're going through a little Christmas study. We're not homeschooling this month. We're just doing Christmassy things. <laughs> um, you know, reading reading some great books um, that teach a, a really sweet lesson, um, and yeah, we're just we're just making the month, uh, I guess, a little more special. Just putting aside some of the more stressful things mm. that homeschooling and life brings about. <laughs> I think um, <clears throat> going back to what Alyssa said, I, I think it's helpful. You know, just uh, uh, reading through. Um, the, the Christmas story in Luke mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and just uh, focusing on the person of Jesus for, uh, for the month. And uh, there's all different ways to do that. You know, you can just, not only the Christmas story, but you can follow, just, just go through, you know, like the Gospel of John mm-hmm. and, uh, and you, with the sole purpose of just, just uh, looking for how Jesus uh, identifies as God, you know, or, or how, does he, how does he show that he is God? Um, or you can look for things like, well, how does Jesus treat people? Mm. You know, and that's just a, you just see over and over and over again, the kindness of Jesus when he interacts with people. Mm. And so, um, that, you know, just going through, going through the scriptures and, and focusing on Christ, I think mm-hmm. is a good yeah. way to do that. Really no different than any other, other season. Right. There's just this right. cool yeah. idea that we use this month to mm-hmm. set aside to think about the birth of Christ, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. being our Savior. Right. And, and I just appreciate where our church is going with our sermon series mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. of looking at some of the key words that are happening. And, and on Christmas um, Eve services, we're going to be looking at another key word. And this is going to be where we'll be inviting all of our children to be joining us, to be a mm. part of that service. Mm. And um, I, I know that from a worship team perspective, if I put that hat on for myself right now, I just it it's neat to see kids in the room together worshiping with their parents mm-hmm. or their grandparents and this mm-hmm. generational component of worship. Yeah. I do get why we don't do it yeah. <laughs> all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so nursery coordinator is helpful. <laughs> so thank you for allowing parents to fully engage in worship. Um, but how can we prepare our children for this time that we know they'll be worshiping with us during that day. You know, they'll be singing, listening to scripture, having a little bit of a sermon time to listen to. You know, what what ideas can we prep parents for so it's not a, hopefully a chaos and disaster of trying to kid wrangle, <laughs> you know, the whole time. Well, I was going to say just plan for chaos. <laughs> plan for chaos. <laughs> just yeah. expect it. And <laughs> hopefully the other members of the church are gracious. and Right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's part of it too, yeah. knowing that that's hey, kids are kids. Yeah. But yeah. What, what would what can we do to prepare their hearts for that time? You know, um, one of my favorite psalms. I just keep going back to it, and I have it right here is Psalm seventy eight, um, and it just talks about it talks about children and it talks about parents. Um, he says, "We will conceal, we will not conceal them from their children." But tell to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wondrous works, what he has done. And then he says, for we, for he, for God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should teach them to their children. And then these last two verses, that the generation to come might know even the children yet to be born, that they may arise and tell them to their children so that they will put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Mm. And so it's this this idea of when it talk about the praises of God that that word praises is just a I, I think it's it's called a metonymy where you're you're 
it's referring to something else, meaning it's referring to who God is and what he's done, the mm-hmm. praises, mm-hmm. so that we're, we're just, um, throughout the week, again, I mentioned that before, but talking to our kids about how great God is and about God, what God has done mm-hmm. um, in the cross. And, uh, and then when, we, you know, when they get to church, then they're hearing it, hearing it again from other people. Mm-hmm. They hear it from us. They hear it from the other people. You know? mm-hmm. and, um, and so uh, I think the preparation is just talking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of ideas are coming to me even sure. right now of the fact that our our worship services have been going through some of these key words or phrases. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so us as adults have been going through this, and the children might not have gotten the same exposure to that. As we read the Luke 2 passage with mm-hmm. them or and the Christmas story passage, and we look for those key phrases and be like, We've been studying this together in, mm-hmm. in our big church, yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's going to lead to where we are worshiping together on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a little hint: the word of that day is going to be "behold." Mm-hmm. So we can look for the word "behold" as parents, yeah. Yeah. and set the expectations of our kids. Yeah. For those, just another idea for those of us that don't have kids right now, um, we can engage the kids around us. Mm-hmm. There's, some, there's something as a parent when you see another, as you mentioned, another adult, you know, mm-hmm. worshiping next to us and, and Ashley speaks and says something or says hi mm-hmm. to a kid as a parent. You're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, other people mm-hmm. around us yeah. are acknowledging the kids in the room and <clears throat> right, right. saying, how is your day? And mm-hmm. it's yeah. neat to see you here. So there yeah. can be this uh, yeah. community right. of believers worshiping together that is involving and engaging the kids yeah. even before the service Right, mm-hmm. kicks in. Well, there was a there was a youth ministry book written a long time ago, and the guy can't remember his name, um, but he he talked about this idea of creating webs of relationship within the body of Christ, and that that really helps kids mm-hmm. uh, when they when they do leave or they go to college or whatever. They have, um, they're yes, they come back and visit their family, but they also have people within the body that maybe mm-hmm. they sat next to mm-hmm. um, that that showed interest in them, and you're you're creating these webs of of uh, mm. that they have things to fall back on and these relationships that they that they watched people worship mm-hmm. they watched people they heard words of encouragement from another adult um that pointed them to christ and that's really important yeah 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 i, I agree and it's just fun again the, the, this christmas eve service will be fun mm-hmm. i mean it, every i feel like every time it is um and it's just neat to see it from a fresh perspective each and every year mm-hmm. that we go through this Advent season to be reminded that God put on flesh, mm-hmm. dwelled among us, mm-hmm. and um, was born yeah. in a manger, yeah. and ultimately to pay for our sins. And yeah. as we rehearse that with ourselves, with our families, with our kids, yeah. it allows those times of worshiping together to be a little more special. Yeah. You know, you know there's a verse that has, um, and I don't, can, do you have an access to, to read it? It's it's um, First Peter mm-hmm. one eight. Sure. And and what we've been talking about, I think, enhances the reality of this verse. Mm. I love this verse. It's become one of my faves. Uh, I'll pull it up and let you know. Okay. First Peter one eight. Yeah. So um, First Peter one eight says, "And though you have not seen him, this is the one you're talking yes. about. Mm-hmm. Yes, you yep. love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him." You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Yeah, and so we're, we're talking about someone who we can't see, hmm. you know, but it says even though you don't see him, you mm-hmm. love him, mm-hmm. and we do. Um, and why? Well, because we believe. Hmm. We, we have placed our trust in this person, and, and, and that is Christ, our Savior. And then you greatly rejoice and with joy. Great, inexpressible joy. There is this component of a response right of worship yes that happens yes and uh and you know just for for some of us uh we have loved ones that have gone before us that are that have seen him face to face and that just amazes me mm. but right now for us even though we don't see him we love him and and as we worship and as we tell our kids about him they can love the one that that they are awaiting to see face to face i think it's yeah part of it. that's cool it's yeah. a great way to end it yep. um Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Just encouraging to see generations worshiping together. Alyssa, generational to mm-hmm. you, John, Josh, mm-hmm. uh, together. I mean, it's just the, the family components here at FBC. And mm-hmm. There's 
there's webs yes, that are right. consistently being created. And yes. You guys are one of those webs. Wow, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for Kid Wrangling and being the nursery <laughs> coordinator. My pleasure. On a regular basis. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, guys, be encouraged. Um, it's it's going to be a, a neat worship time together, re- remembering that um, the worship times are really no different than any other weekend for that Christmas Eve service. We have the Saturday night service at 5 o'clock. So if you, if you really want that evening opportunity, come on out on that Saturday night, the 23rd. And then Sunday, you'll have the three services in the morning, 9 o'clock and 1045 upstairs, 1045 downstairs. And um, by the way, Saturday night, if you typically come, they have potluck dinners. Hmm. And that will be occurring on Saturday night again. So if you're not a typical FSAT attender and you want to come on Saturday night, just know you can stick around for dinner afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. Feel free to bring your favorite dish if you like and and mooch off of everybody else what they bring. Um, And then we are also having a Christmas Day potluck lunch. Wow. So come to church if you want to engage with your church family and community. And um, 12 o'clock, bring your favorite dish for that as well and uh, have Christmas Day with FBC people. So it's going to be a fun weekend, Mm -hmm. and I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, thank you guys once again. Mm -hmm. And reach out. Let us know if you have any specific stories, testimonies, things that you want to share. You can be here as well and pass that on. I'm excited about the next episode. We're hopefully going to hear from some um, stories of what Follow the Star um, really accomplished this past year. So look for that in a few days to come. So. Thank you guys so much. Until we do chat again, let's let Christ be the focus of our lives each and every day.